Hi everyone, I'm Major Tio Pei Mei. Welcome to A Day in My Life Mother's Day Edition. Okay, before I get ready for work, I will need to prepare for my son first. Come, join me. Hi Ryan. Come, mommy, bring you to outside already. Yeah? Baby, wake up. Go to school already. Come. Come. Mommy, carry on. Check. Ryan, go to school. You see? Wow, good job. Okay, now I'm going to send my son to school. Then after that, I'll head on to office. Ryan, Ryan, where are you? Where is my baby, Ryan? Okay, bye, Ryan. See you later. Yeah, good boy. Okay, mommy says, see you later. Okay, bye-bye. You go to school, huh? I dropped my son off. I'm going to office now. Come, let's go. Okay, during lunch time, I will join a few colleagues for lunch. Come. I typically finish my day's work at around 5.30 to 6 p.m. before I wrap up for the day. This is my favourite part of the day. Hello, baby. Hi, baby. Are you happy? Mommy is home. Hello, home. <laughs> happy? Happy. Happy. Okay, sayang. Okay, yeah, mommy go change first, then later come and play with you. Hi, uh, I'm Major Theo, branch in HIMC APGC. This is my husband, Song. Both of us met in France during my overseas posting and we got married in 2006. Our son Ryan was born in 2008 and he will turn 13 in August this year. He was born with a rare genetic disorder that causes progressive brain damage and other related complications. He suffers from global developmental delay and needs assistance with all tasks. We have been living with my in-laws for a few years though we enjoy excellent support from both sides of the family. Fortunately, we also have a good nanny eh, to take care of Ryan when we were at work. Okay, on a good day, Ryan sleeps through the night and wakes up only when he poops or needs a change of clothes. This usually happens around 5 in the morning or earlier if he's not feeling well. Sometimes uh, I can coax him back to sleep. If I can get him back to sleep, then I have to entertain him until it's time for school. With luck, I can get more sleep and wake up at 6.30, prepare his meal and medicine before getting ready for work. We will leave the house at around 7.30 and I will drop him at his school before heading to work. And at work, I lead a team of DxOs and NSF to manage the career planning of all active personnel within APGC. And usually, I'll plan to leave the office at around 5.30 to 6 p.m. When I get home, the first thing I do is to talk and play with Ryan. We will then have dinner at around 7 p.m. I'll put Ryan to bed at around 9.30. He usually will sleep around 10 p.m. While I strive to be professional at work and deliver outcomes, I also set aside protected time for my family. I will make it a point to bring Ryan for all his medical appointments and talk to a doctor firsthand to understand how his condition is progressing and the way ahead. We also have regular family vacations during the less busy part of the year to bond and build memories together. 
Well, I always tell Pei Mei mm. that I'm the uh, logical and the analytical and objective one. I'm the external relations guy basically. So I talk to the doctors, therapists, teachers, parents, and pretty much everyone else. I also handle the logistics. Ryan's logistics are quite tough. Lah, because he has a long list of medications that need to be replenished. He also has consumables that we need to buy. He takes five feeds a day. The feed itself is also made up of several different components, different powders. And these powdered components, they are actually produced on small quantities in limited batches. Some have fairly long lead time, three to five months. So we need to keep three to five months of stock in case anything goes wrong. But Ryan is very fortunate to have a very doting grandparents and a very, very good nanny who's been with us for many years. As for the grandparents, my father and father-in-law take turns driving their precious little grandson to and from school whenever Pemi and I are not free. Such excellent family support gives me the peace of mind to focus on my duties as a branch head. Furthermore, I am blessed with the understanding commanders, bosses and colleagues. They have been most supportive when I need time off to take care of Ryan. For example, I was granted no pay leave to attend to Ryan when his prognosis was bleak and his medical condition was very unpredictable. As his condition stabilised, I could return to normal work but I took part-time employment then and I was also given a posting near home where I would be able to react very quickly to his medical emergency. It is this support and encouragement from friends, families, uh, colleagues and bosses that allow me to continue being a good mother Ryan at the same time contribute to the RSF. I had a rather difficult pregnancy while carrying Ryan and the gynae recommended inducing labour to add term to avoid possible complications downstream. Yeah, but we were still expecting a normal delivery, so payment got admitted. I was eagerly looking forward to in my mind, cut the cord, hear Ryan cry, hold him in our arms, having that once in a lifetime Kodak moment. But Ryan had other plans. Uh. So he couldn't wait to come out, so he scared the doctors. So they immediately did an emergency cesarean to pull him out. But I had the privilege of seeing our little screaming boy being pushed from the theatre to the nursery, while Pei Mei had to wait a little bit longer until she woke up. I think like all new parents, standard law. <laughs> Sleepless night, panic when the kids appear unwell. But in our case, the panic started two days after birth when Ryan suddenly became drowsy and unresponsive just prior to discharge. He subsequently had fits and a CT scan showed some minor bleeding in his brain. So Song and I had to spend next eight days shuffling to and fro from the ICU. Yep. Well, everyone was very happy when Ryan finally came home on day 11. We didn't know at that time this was only a sneak preview because there were going to be many, many more unplanned trips to the emergency room and hospital staycations. Quite earlier on, I think we noticed that Ryan tends to stutter easily. Yeah, every little thing. Yeah, like then uh, difficult to specify. Then he was quite archy, you know. He would throw his head back, then he would extend his neck in somehow. Uh, Unnatural posture, then doctor initially treated Ryan for reflux, which we believe because we don't know anything better. But uh, we had one very experienced uh, pediatrician who thought it was very strange. Uh. And then we had big alarm bells because the MRI showed that there were some deformities in the brain. Then after that, it was like two months of uh, tests, hospital stays, in and out, specialist appointments, before the diagnosis was finally confirmed. And they told us it was a very, very rare uh, inborn error of metabolism and the prognosis was quite poor. It causes progressive brain damage and children born with it typically didn't live past early childhood. We named Ryan Rui Jin, you know, Jin because both of us were in the ASAF and we were very proud of it. So there are two choices, you either become very upset, you get depressed, or you decide to accept reality and move on. We chose the second option. So we set our mind okay, to give Ryan the best childhood that we can, provide him with the best care and uh, shower him with love all the days of his life. That's our determination right there. Yep. Okay, I recall many many years ago uh, when we brought him to Port Dixon, then he was crying. Then I was telling him, if you call Ma, I will carry you Ryan if you call Ma. Then he suddenly cried out, Ma! Then I was like, oh! Oh, he started to call me Ma! And that was the first time I was rejoiced. Yeah, we were all stunned, we didn't expect it. So by the time I take out camera no more, so I told her no count because Ryan was crying, so that one not counted. And no video evidence. But that is good enough for me. I think Ryan is a fighter who takes it just all in his stride. 
I mean, he's been through a very difficult childhood, but he remains a very happy boy. He brings a lot of joy to everybody around him. He's not a very fussy boy, and he doesn't throw tantrums. In fact, I don't, re don't ever recall him throwing a tantrum. Maybe complain a little bit, but never scream, never throw tantrum. So he's a really good boy. Teasing out that broad smile in the morning before you go to work and coming home to another big smile after a hard day of flying and at the office. I mean, it's something that would definitely melt your heart. It's the highlight of my day. Before I go to work, I have to cho-cho him until he smile. And then after I'll be very happy, I go to work. And at the end of the day, I cho-cho him again and then uh, we all have a good time together. For me, it's uh, when he it was super cute. Uh, if he's pissed off face, uh, then he's pain to so look and the, uh, the eyes are the daggers in his eye stairs. I also like the moment when he would like to manja with me. La. So, wow, I feel really touched my heart. La. There's no escape to that. La. It would be good la, if Ryan can learn to communicate in, uh, with those around him in a more regular and richer way. Because right now, the primary mode of communication really is by facial expressions and maybe some noises. Sometimes he blinks, smiles, he, you know, he makes a noise and then we, we call this the Ryan code. People around, people outside don't know what the Ryan code is, so it's quite hard. I mean, we are constantly working in the school to find some way that will work for him. Maybe using switches, eye gaze or neural feedback or some special software. So far, we haven't found anything that works consistently, but we will keep looking. But actually for me, most importantly is Ryan must be happy and comfortable and we'll continue to shower him with care and love. We may not be able to influence the quantity of his life, but we can certainly provide Ryan with a good quality of life, right? I'm proud of Pei for her strength and resilience and for the sacrifices that she's made for Ryan and the family. She remains committed to both her work as well as to the family and has achieved success as a officer, a mother and a wife. So thank you Pei for the unwavering love and support that you've showered upon Ryan and the family. And on behalf of Ryan, Happy Mother's Day to you and to all the mothers out there. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Days.